Alrighty guys, uh, it's a really, really cold night out here in the shop and uh, so I can't really get much work done as far as resin casting and whatnot because it's just too cold for that. So I thought I'd take a minute and run through the assembly of the 15mm uh, Arnhem Bridge, the bridge too far, and show you guys how this goes together. It goes together really easily, or I think it will. This is actually going to be my first time putting one together, so we're going to find out if I know what I'm talking about here. All right, let's first go through some of the parts here. Well, obviously we have the, the side bits. There's four uh, the side pieces. Um, would have been nice to make them all in one piece, but the size restriction of the of the machine, and also for shipping purposes, it made more sense to split them in half. So we had to do that. Uh, same thing with the the bit that goes across the top. Um, because of the size restriction of the machine, we had to make some separate pieces, one for each end. I'll show you how nice and easy those go together here in a few minutes. Let's move those aside for just a second. Then we have the roadbed surface itself and then the sidewalks. These are divided into three pieces. The two end pieces are identical, so they can be switched either way. And then, of course, there's the center piece. And they all have little cutouts in them. So they only go together one way, so it's just about idiot proof. The sidewalk pieces are also split into three pieces, but they don't split at the same points. They split at different places, and that's in an effort to give the entire assembly a little more strength. We don't like to have all the cuts in one place. It becomes a weak point. Um, the end pieces of the sidewalks, four of those, are identical, so they can go any, any which way. And then, of course, there's the two longer bits. Those are the center pieces. And they all interlock as such and line up these uh, slots here, line up with these slots. We'll see how all that works in just a minute. And then, of course, underneath it, there are uh, girders that go the length of the, uh, length of the bridge. And this is one here and another one here. If you were to measure the center and then measure each end, the height, you'll notice that the ends are taller than the center. So there is a bit of a, a curve, an arc, to the bottom side. And that's why that's why that happens. So you line up the, the centers, which are the smallest bit, and leave the tallest bits to the outside. And like I said, there's two of those, and they're identical. And then there's some doublers that go across the middle section to tie them together and give them more strength. And we'll see when we get to putting those together, we want to make real sure to make sure that the doublers are on the inside so we don't see them. But uh, we'll get to that when we get to that. So let's put the doublers and the girders aside. I'm lazy right now, so I just want to take a quick second to talk about what you're going to need to proceed with building this. Um, unless you've got some kind of table that nothing sticks to, you're probably going to want some kind of wax paper or something to put down on the table. I put down a strip right here of wax paper and, and then set my parts on it so the glue won't stick to the table. And for glue, uh, you can use CA glue if you want. Um, you can use regular white school glue like Elmer's glue, or you can use a wood glue. Whatever, uh, whatever your preference is. I'm going to go ahead and use wood glue because I've got some here in a reasonable size container. Um, aside from that, you're going to want a good selection of clothes pins to clamp pieces together. When we get to the top part and that part has to bend, you're going to want to clamp it along as uh, you're letting the glue dry. So either clothes pins or some kind of clamps, you're going to want a, a good selection of those. And aside from that, um, either some kind of T-square or blocks or something to keep things good and square would be handy. And we're actually going to need a couple of popsicle sticks or, or very thin pieces of wood for one of the uh, processes we're going to do. And when we get to that, I'll show you what you're going to need these for. I think you're going to need about four of them, probably. Um, I think that's about all you're going to need to put this thing together. Uh, after that, it's just a matter of finishing and painting. Um, any uh, acrylic, water-based type paint would work great. And start building. Okay, first thing we want to do, we've laid out our three roadbed sections. I want to go ahead and 
figure out where the sidewalks go. There's going to be one there, the center section that goes there, and one there. Okay, so I'll just kind of slide those off for a second, and then pick up the two side pieces that go on here. And notice one has a upright piece at the center and one doesn't. That means this is a set. Okay, so I want to put these on. I'm just going to do a little trial fit here. Okay, so it looks like everything fits. Now, this piece here is sitting up about an eighth of an inch from the roadbed. That's because the sidewalk piece here slides underneath it and takes up that space. So that looks like that works out good. Put the other one in here. Okay, that piece slid in there good. Try the center section. Okay, so that's the way that goes. It looks like it's all fitting together pretty good. Okay, so we'll pull these off. Yeah, go ahead and start building. I'm going to put a little bit of glue to connect these two pieces together. And this is why the uh, the wax paper underneath is so important. Otherwise this would be sticking to the table right now. Do this one. Those together. Having a little piece of paper towel handy would be a good thing probably. Wipe off that excess glue. Okay, now I'll put a little bit right along where the sidewalk goes. Go ahead and put that on. I'm being careful to line it up with those slots. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect because once the next piece goes on it's going to index everything. But the closer I get it now, the easier the next steps will go. Okay. Put that there. Okay, so we'll take one of these. Let's see, so it's going to go on there. Okay. So what I want to do is put glue on the surface facing down. It's going to rest on top of the sidewalks. We'll put a little bit on these tabs as well. Just a little bit. Go ahead and stick this guy in. Okay. All right, so they're good. All right, now we'll push the sidewalks in, make sure they're in there good. Wipe a little of this excess glue off. Pretty good. Okay, so we'll take the next piece here, do the same thing. And now we need to also put a little bit where these bits go together. Like right here. It's a little step there. Okay. At this point, you'll probably want to take a very small piece of wax paper. Just wrap it over where these two come together. And then put a little clip on there to just keep them lined up. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I'll go ahead and stop the camera for a minute and then do the other side. Because it goes together exactly the same way. And then when we come back, we'll go ahead and put these uh, top pieces on. Now what I want to do is start talking about putting these top pieces on. Now the center piece here, 
can't really put on until every all the glue is dried real good and we can remove these but we can start by putting the two end pieces on one goes here and one goes over here and this is where our uh, popsicle sticks are going to come in handy let me show you how I went ahead and just cut up a couple of these into smaller pieces and we got some of these here so when we glue this on uh, we want to clamp it on but we also want to put a clamp right on the very end to, to keep that end down. Now, you probably can't see because of the angle here, but when I try to put one right on the end, there's an upright here. So what we do in that case is this little trick here. We just take a popsicle stick here, overlap it, and then clamp it. And that will hold down that end. This one here we can get pretty close to the end and I think we'll be okay. Yeah, there we go. So we'll do that on both sides after applying a little bit of glue. And that keeps the ends down. Otherwise, if we clamped it back here somewhere, that end would, this end here would fly up a little bit and we don't want that. So let's go ahead and just glue this on. We just put a little bit. Doesn't take much. Whoops. Locating where it goes is real simple because there's a little notch here that it goes right up against. So, go ahead and put that one on. And we'll go ahead and put one about halfway. And then we'll do the little popsicle stick trick here at the end. Clamp down this end piece. And make sure the side's lined up real good. It is. And we'll go around to the other side and do the exact same thing. And that's it for that. We'll let that dry. Get that extra glue off. And I'll go ahead and do the other side. Okay, well I got the other end on here. I'm going to go ahead and let all this glue dry. I've just go to, kind of pushed it aside. Now we're going to work on the girders that go across the bottom. So there's two things we need to concern ourselves with. And that is uh, that the doublers go on the inside and that the uh, that everything remains perfectly straight because once we attach these to the bottom of the uh, bridge it's going to help keep the bridge straight as well so as I said before um, if you measure the tip and the and the if you measure both ends one end is going to be taller than the other the smaller end is the center because there's a there's a curvature to it the side with all the little notches in it is the side that will be up towards the uh, bridge. But we're going to kind of build the whole thing upside down to make life a little easier. Now, there's cross pieces that go in between the girders and they all line up with these little uh, notches there, which makes it really easy. But you'll notice most of them have a one, in, one eighth inch wide gap or three millimeter gap there, but there's four of them that have a gap that's twice as wide. And uh, why I did that is for the area that has the doubler. There's four notches there where it'll be twice as wide. So that's going to make life easy as far as jigging up this doubler. So what we want to do is we have, we have this one here, we have the center figured out, and we have our doubler. Doubler goes towards the inside. Now let's go ahead and set up the other one sort of as a mirror image. those two there and here's the doubler. So now to make this simple turn this up put the doubler on there and then slide in one of the ones with the wider uh, wider slots in it. Okay slide in another one and eventually all four. Okay, so that's how it goes together. And then this one on this side I'm 
beginning there. Goes that way. Very simple. That's sort of jigged up. So now that we have it this way, I'm going to go ahead and take one of my square blocks, put it in here just to keep everything square. And then I'm going to take this one off and put it back in, this time gluing everything. So the first thing I want to do is glue the doubler. to the two outside pieces and then I'll put a little bit of glue in each one of the slots see if I can't get this back on there again down good. I'm going to go ahead and put a couple of these clothes pins to sort of clamp the doublers together. Put a, little, put a tiny bit of pressure on them. Now I'll go ahead and do the same thing on this side. I'll go ahead and let that dry for a while, and when it's done, then the rest of the normal doubl uh, doublers, uh, cross spars, uh, go underneath, all the way out there, and all the way out there. I want to let the center section dry up real good. Everything's nice and flat on the table, so we'll have a nice flat uh, girder system underneath the bridge. Just a quick little side note while we're letting that glue dry. Um, as I said in the beginning of the video, this is the first one of these I'm, I've put together, and I'm putting it together the way I sort of designed it in my head. But now that I'm here doing this, I'm almost thinking it might be easier to assemble this whole thing dry with no glue, get it all jigged up perfectly, and then go along each one of the joints with a little bit of medium CA and, uh, and glue the joints. And uh, I, think it, I think it might be an easier way of doing it. I've already started doing this one this way, so I'm going to go ahead and finish it with the wood glue. But that's just something to think about when you go to build this. It might be best just to put the whole thing together dry, get it exactly jigged up perfect the way you want it, and then just go along and just, you know, hit each one of the little joints where any two pieces mat, uh, meet with a little bit of medium CA and then some uh, accelerator. It might just be the way to go on this. So, okay, well I've let this dry for a while. I'm going to go ahead and pull these clamps off. Get them out of the way. And now, I'm going to go ahead and do, I think, what I was uh, just discussing a second ago. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put all these pieces on, turn it back over, and then just hit each one with a little bit of CA glue and wrap this thing up real quick instead of uh, goofing around with the, the wood glue. I think, it's a, I think it's a pretty good idea. Now you notice there's uh, end ones that don't have full slots, they have like kind of half slots. So, I'm just going to go along and just put a dab of glue on each one of these. That was a whole lot easier than the uh, wood glue, so yeah, that was a pretty good idea, I think. 
So now what I'll do is I'll get this out of the way, bring the bridge back, and then we'll put that uh, center span in there, and then we'll put this on the bottom, and that'll be it. We'll be done. Okay, so now what we'll do is we'll test fit this and see uh, how much we need to sand off each end to get it to fit. And as we set it down in here, we notice that it's flying a bit up here. So it's not all the way down. So we'll just take a little bit off of each end. So we'll just kind of keep finessing it here until it's exactly right. And I think we got it now. Okay. So what we want to do is put our glue along the top of this. Set this guy on there. And we'll just start going down the line, making sure it's lined up good with the outside edge. Let this dry, flip it over, and attach the girder system to the bottom, and this baby's complete. All right, well, the glue on this top piece here is pretty well dry, but I'm going to leave the last couple of clamps on and just take off the, the clamps in the center. And we'll go ahead and just roll this over upside down, and then take our girder system, and this is the way it goes. It sits on just like this. So what I'll do is I'll just flip it over so I can put some glue on it, and off we go. Okay, that should definitely be enough, since this is pretty much just a decoration that goes on the bottom. Just go on down the line and make sure it's not coming off either side. This is another case where you might want to just set it on and, and tack it on with the CA. Might not be a bad idea. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and put a couple of drops of CA in a few spots just to keep everything lined up while the, uh, while the wood glue dries. Well, there she is. Complete. So we can get these off. That glue's dry. So there you are. There's your one uh, 15 millimeter scale model of the Arnhem Bridge. Ready to paint. Now at this stage, I would probably load up my spray gun with some sanding sealer and spray the whole thing with sanding sealer and then find all the little areas where there's pieces that come together and fill those with wood putty or any kind of uh, bondo or anything I'd fill those up and then get it all ready, primer it and then paint it. But at this stage you could just go right on top of this wood with uh, you know with a uh, water-based uh, acrylic like a house paint type stuff and you could get this thing on the board. Um, I made a lot of stops waiting for glue to dry and stopped the film and started the film and things like that. But if you just worked straight through and you were in an environment where the glue was drying real fast or you were using CA, you could probably get this whole thing together in about 15 minutes. And it is nice and strong. Uh, the center is off the ground because of that curve. And you know, I can push on it and feel that it definitely could support some weight. Now, uh, there is a, a half model of this bridge available for somebody that wants to put the bridge right at the edge of their game board and it just stops right in the middle. It goes together exactly the same way so there's no need to do separate instructions on that. 
and there's also uh, north and south approaches, which are another, I believe, 18 inches long each, or maybe a little more than that. Um, and they go together very much the same way too. They don't have any of these these components. It's just the road bed, the uh, sidewalks, and then the undercarriage. But that all goes together the same way as, as this does. So if you're buying the uh, the optional approaches, the north and south approaches, they'll go together exactly the same way. And once they're together, you can bond them to this and make it all one piece or transport them separately, which probably makes more sense because this alone is four feet long and with the other two pieces it gets to be close to eight feet so that would be a little tough to move so there we go that's the bridge all together and ready to go if you got any questions at all on the assembly or finishing or anything else or even uh, comments or suggestions well, as always feel free to email me uh, actually the idea of the half bridge came from a customer that emailed me uh, just yesterday or today, I'm not even sure when, because uh, now it's the middle of the night, it was probably yesterday. So that was a customer suggestion to do the half bridge and I thought that was a great idea so we're doing that in 15 millimeter and also the 285th scale version we're doing a half bridge also. So uh, if you have a suggestion send it in, we'll probably do it if it's a good one. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching.